I've been working as a maths TA in the department here for about 18 months now and I certainly realised after the first year when I was going to the higher maths I was a bit anxious because I didn't feel I could um, support effectively and I know I was confusing students and I just thought I've got to do something about this. I can't be effective in my role. It's, it's all there. So Caroline Dixon enrolled herself on a course to develop her mathematics skills. Signing up for the higher level teaching assistant maths specialism course. So, what are you actually doing to the 23, uh, to the 9, sorry? Partitioning. You're partitioning it. Yeah. And a lot of what we're going to do today is about partitioning. It was a decision that some in her position may have thought twice about. How do we know it's 10? Caroline has always struggled with the subject and only recently passed her maths GCSE. And hopefully, I've got the right answer. Actually coming to maths full stop has been quite a traumatic journey for me. I found maths very hard at school. Although I love the subject, I found it quite hard. So what you're saying is A is equal to 2. So 2 add 5 equals 7. So that is right, isn't it? Yeah. I couldn't understand why I couldn't get my GCSE maths. And I tried twice before I actually got it successfully four years ago. Confidence, you know, it wasn't there. Right then, have you done all those? Right then, so... C plus A, so C is 9, add 2 is 11, so that's excellent, well done. I don't want students turning around saying, Sir, Mrs is confusing me, can you come and help me? Because I've had that, I've actually had that happen in class a couple of times and then that's what sort of spared me on to do this course. And then we've got B plus B. 5 plus 5. Excellent, so that's, that's another tick. Then we've got 2 plus 5 is 7. Plus nine, Plus nine. well done, that's excellent. Yeah. Following a successful pilot in 2007, the maths specialism course for HLTAs is now offered nationally by a variety of training providers. Whilst each course may have slight variations in delivery, the aim is a simple one. TAs get an opportunity to increase their confidence and knowledge of the subject. I think we do show them horizontally, not vertically and then they can apply strategies, and they're in control of the maths. It's not the method that controls them, it's what they're trying to do. They'll ask me, they'll say, can we do it like this? And I always say, do it whichever way you're comfortable. Well, that's the point. So it's yeah. empowering them, actually, isn't it? Yeah. So a lot of these children won't have a lot of confidence, so each time we need to empower them. The best way of empowering someone is that they achieve success. Teachers have commented that having somebody who they can really trust working with them has made a huge difference. They've got the strategies, they've got the resources, they can differentiate, they can think on their feet and show initiative when they need to. It gives the teacher far more scope to think about what they're doing and far more freedom to work with other pupils when they need to as well. And it's one beat, isn't it? So what would half of its value be? A half. So what's that all together then? A one and a half makes... Yes, so you need to join that, that larger box up to the small one. It's just too abstract. Over a five-month period, Caroline will attend nine full-day workshops. I've heard you say that, but then I'd say, well, we've got two, two, what, we've got two column. lots of ten. Well, we're the ten. But let's say, then, let's yeah. carry two lots of ten. Yeah. Four lots of ten are 40, plus the two tens you carried, 60. Mm. If we don't do that, it's your back to formula, your back to method, you're back to lack of understanding. It's really important, I think, we model correct language. One workshop introduces a skills audit, which candidates will use throughout the course to identify their knowledge gaps and fill them in. The whole idea of today is to, is to find out what we're good at so that we're conscious of that um, and to identify the areas that we need to work on. And, and over the coming months, with the support of the teaching staff on the course and with the support of your mentors in school and with the support of some excellent resources which are available will help to address some of those targets which you can set yourself to them. So it is a linear equation, it's quite a simple one, it's saying that x equals 3 because it, everywhere along here, yeah, it's, it's three units away from this axis. So 
Everywhere along there will be x equals three. But I came in thinking I was going to be the weakest candidate, and we're all very much the same. The only advantage some people have got, they've already been working at with Key Stage 4, so they're a little bit more confident with a harder part of the audit. Yeah, yeah. Caroline, what are you doing your um, positives just, today? Um, well, I'm quite confident with data handling and things like that. I'm quite OK with percentages. I'm a bit concerned with me, linear equations and things like that. So I can do things, but there's an easy way to do them. I've sort of realised I'm doing things, mm. quite a number of things, the hard way. So I want to go back and see if I can find, you know, find the right equation to make it a bit easier. I'm going to go back and I'm going to have a look. And if I've got a problem, I'm going to actually go back to my mentor and ask them if they can help me make more sense of things and sort of perfect the methods I need to use so that I'm more effective in class. Caroline's mentor back at school is a maths teacher. These sessions allow her to build on what she's learned on the course and convert it to useful strategies for the classroom. I've come back from my um, second day at the workshop and I just, with the skills audit, this is like the one we did on our test today, and I just really wondered if you would mind looking through it with me, because um, obviously I want, there's, there's um, certain areas that I wouldn't feel confident going into classes with, into my intervention groups and supporting, um, until I've really brushed upon my skills. Oh, I think it's very important to have a mentor. Uh, you need somebody that you feel comfortable with, that you can go back to and say, well, actually, I don't understand this. I'm shortly going to be doing an intervention class with a year eight group. And I seem to be having a real, a lot of bother trying to get them to understand algebra. Have you got any hints on, any advice on how to deliver algebra? Because these, these groups are the class groups, so I'm having to sort of like make it very, um, Start from the beginning, really. Very, very, very basic, very basic yes. Yeah. Covering up numbers and asking what's the number I've covered up. Right. What number of, is my hand or what's, what's under the square. So Leave letters until they are fed up doing squares. Fed up of calling it And saying yeah, there's underneath whatever, the rectangle right. or underneath your hand or cover the missing up. number is. Right, cover up letters. Have a word. They're there to keep you going so when you think you can't do something, you know, when you're finding something difficult. You should just be able to go and talk to them and see if they can help you round it or find you, you know, somewhere else or somebody else to explain it. Basically, what you're saying is if I take the letters out and put something in them more familiar with or just completely leave them just out leave, and leave, let them... Just leave, leave a gap that they can yeah, fill with a they'll... number and then... Until I want to call it something yes. because they're fed up of calling it nothing. <laughs> right, OK, then. That'll be... I'll try that then. That should get them started. It has made a tremendous difference in Caroline. Her confidence has grown and she is far more willing to approach me now. I think she is realising it is a question of confidence for herself. She does know all the maths involved. She's just not familiar with some of the terms, or thinks she's not, and needs to be encouraged and persuaded that she does know. Today, Caroline's working with a small intervention group. Having struggled with maths herself, it's a form of work that she finds particularly rewarding. Who's done algebra before? And who likes algebra? Oh, you might like it, dear. Right then, so what I thought we might do then was we might do a little quiz on algebra. For instance, if I said to you two, two cans of Coke cost 8p, I mean, I know that's cheap, but if two cans of Coke cost 8p, so I'll, I'll be asking you... So will yeah. it will be So it'll, be, it'll equal four, yeah. Is it how many twos are in eight? You'll tell me. How many twos are in eight? Four. Yeah, so you're right. Having an extra body in the classroom is always useful, no matter what they're doing. But having somebody there who knows the subject and can help answer individual questions and lead individual students further along the learning path is tr tremendous. Because it's quite complicated, it can get a bit confusing. I actually, as I went my way through, I crossed the things off that I've used. So then I can see what I've got left. And now I've got plus 2y add y. Having done my skills audit, I've got algebra now, I understand. <laughs> I understand it after all these years, I actually understand it. Um, but the big problem with algebra is getting, getting students to understand what the letter represents. It's just getting them to understand the method you okay. use. So what would it be, do you think? You've got 2y plus y. Can that y be anything number, any number? Well, it's, what that means is it's one of one y. So what do you think if you've got a y and two y? It could be one. It will be, it will be. Three. Take that as one because it's on its own. Three. Three. Y. That's it. Yeah. So it's plus three y. So that's your answer. 
Algebra is actually not difficult at the level my students are working at, but they found it very, very difficult and I didn't have a clue how to approach it. So you've got, you've got three and you're going to take away one. Uh, two. That's it. So that'll be two Z, add Z, three, three, Z. three Z. So out of that whole string of numbers, what did we get as an answer? Three, three Z. Z. So look how frightening that was. I saw in my first year as the maths TA. I had a big problem trying to get that information across to them, but now, because I've pitched the level of the lesson correctly, I've actually hooked them. So now I know I can build on it. Do you know more about algebra than you thought? Yeah. yeah. Would you feel more confident when you go into your classroom? Yeah. yeah. Having been a head of science, I think back now to how I deployed teaching assistants who worked with me. And I think actually I didn't do it very well because I worked with people who had a large range of of talents and I didn't really use those talents and having looked closely at what HLTAs have to offer I would have loved to have had an HLTA in my department there are so many things that we could have done that we struggle to do and things that that I as a teacher would actually not have done as effectively as an HLTA might have done yeah and what's that worth look up there so what does that make all together? One and a half plus a half. Two and a half. No, one, one and a half plus a half. Well done, yes. Talking to colleagues who've completed the course helps Caroline get more insight. Today she's meeting Joe Budd, an HLTA in Leeds. The talk turns towards how TAs are perceived and how additional study can improve their standing in the eyes of teachers. Do you have the teaching staff around you and your colleagues, all members of staff, do you think their um, attitude towards you has changed? You know, I do feel as though I am treated as an equal member of staff within the department. You know, albeit I'm not a teacher, they do treat me on an equal footing, which I don't think really happened previously, and get much more respect from the pupils as well. The pupils do react differently to you and treat you differently because they know that you are qualified to do that job. They don't just think that you're a mum that's decided to work in school because it's school hours and it's mm -hmm. easy, which I think sometimes that's the pers perspective yeah. that's yeah, given of a, a teaching assistant. Has that given you the confidence to be more proactive? Definitely, yeah. definitely yeah. a lot more. And the support of the other people on the course and helping other people be more proactive in schools. We're able to go back to schools and say, I can do this, will you allow me to do this? Can I use this resource? And sort of push themselves forward and, and they have made strides and everything seems to be moving in the right direction. I didn't realise how much it boils down to confidence. Mm. You know, the kids have got to feel confident if you're not confident. That's right. They're going to pick that up. If I had, say, three sweeties and I had them in a bag and I said, right, I've, got, I've only got to give them to one person, you can have them all. So how many have you got? Three. So that's the answer to some, so you can move on three. One, two, three. That was well done. Mm -hmm.